Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode we're going to be doing a full test and review of this 20-in-1 survival shovel. If you're joining us for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new episodes or our daily giveaways. Additionally, make sure you hit that notification button so you don't miss anything. Also, we have a new round of our Amazon gift card giveaways, and to enter, you need to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. We also pick winners in the very next episode, so if you enter on this particular giveaway, you'll find out who the winner is on the very next episode. For those of you who follow me on my channel regularly, you'll know that we've actually done a few more shovels and folding shovels and survival shovels and things like that than I even realized we've done. But considering the fact they don't get people's ginas in a tickle, they're not exactly the most popular subject topic. Now, there are plenty of people who will see anything that says 20 in one, 30 in one, 10 in one. They tune out automatically. And I get that 100% because they have a mentality, right tool for the right job. Meaning that if you need a saw, you go get a saw. If you need a shovel, you get a shovel. You need an ax, you go get an ax. You need a knife, you get a dedicated knife. While I agree with that philosophy 400%, because of the advent of the multi-tool so many years ago and how this type of tool has now become an integral part of a lot of people's everyday carry, there's nothing saying that in a survival situation, we can't create and innovate and improve upon multi-function tools. So the head all bare bones, it comes with a compact handle on it, which has a rubber over molded grip, which is actually really comfortable. We've got the pickaxe on the back here, and it uses this high carbon steel collar, which is very reminiscent of a lot of different folding shovels, tactical shovels, survival shovels. And then they have the head right here, which is sporting the bottle opener right here. We've got the saw, we've got the main bladed part of the shovel, and then we have this more of a hatchet style head right here so you can do some light duty chopping. And actually pretty standard as far as folding shovels go. Given the various examples we have, this is probably one of the worst shovels, but it still has like this bottle opener looking notch right here. I have no idea what that is. Then we have the marbles folding shovel right here, which like I said, has some of the bladed qualities and the saw hinges on there. We are also seeing that carbon steel collar for a lot of the turning and locking mechanisms. And then this is something that we got in a battle box mission for urban survival. It has the saw, the steel collar, and it also has the bottle opener. I have no idea. I have, literally have no idea why every single company is obsessed with putting bottle openers on everything. I don't get it. Like I said, this is very, very thick, heavy, sturdy, and robust. And to give you kind of an idea, this is one of the extension pole arms. As you can see, it is very, very, very thick. We have some really nice textured threads on here. This thing is definitely built to actually do work. I got the impression very quickly, this thing is different than some of the junk I've had to mess with. And to give you a comparison between the actual fitting for this item and another item, you can see that this is pretty much sheet steel and this is actually like a steel pipe. This thing is designed to get some work done, which is on the Iono. But this thing, I don't even know what this crap is. like. I mean, I've seen heavy duty aluminum foil that looks more robust than this. The threading system on this shovel is actually pretty nice. To, all with, regardless of all the extensions, they thread on really, really well and you can put them on in virtually almost any order, except for the tail cap in the first part. But you can give yourself varying lengths of a shovel, depends on if you want more of a trenching tool or a full on shovel to get some bigger jobs done like while you're out in the field. But I like the concept of once this thing is locked in, I mean, it's it feels like one solid piece. And that to me, for a multifaceted survival tool needs to be of quality construction to really make you feel like you can get the job done. So the first job we went ahead and did obviously use it as a shovel. That's what its main tool is. So we went through and kind of just started doing some digging and digging a hole. And as I'm sure you can guess, it could literally dig a hole. It's a shovel. I mean, if you can't dig a hole with a shovel, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Well, as we were jamming out through the different parts, and like I said, there's 20 total tools in here, but I stuck to the eight major tools that I felt would be the most pertinent and most important in an outdoor camping or survival situation. So moving down the list, we actually wanted to check out the saw on the end of the shovel head, and we decided to try to cut down a little sapling tree. I'm not gonna lie, it did take a few minutes to get through it. It's nowhere near the power or ingenuity or efficiency of a dedicated folding saw. However, it did get the job done and the little hatchet thing, it's nothing to go right home about, but it was delimbing that branch for us pretty effectively. So if you needed to actually do some wood processing, it's not gonna be as good as having a hatchet or a camp knife or a really big folding saw with you, 
but it technically will get the job done. Now for me, what makes this design decently innovative and interesting is the fact that it does have a really nice nylon pouch. This thing is really thick and robust. It has some really nice zippers on it, but it's the fact that they kind of go all inspector gadget on you and hide tools inside the really thick, robust handle. So the next tool that I want to go use is the hunting knife. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did kind of laugh at the actual term. I wish they would have just said knife instead of hunting knife because, well, you could hunt with this. I mean, obviously it's better to hunt with something than nothing, but <sighs> marketing, that's all I'm going to say. But this has two of these Allen screw keys right here to kind of lock everything down. Looks like you could probably change out the blades if you wanted to. It's got an internal threading mechanism. And when it's all said and done and attached to the handle for a better ergonomic grip, this is pretty much what it looks like. And that's kind of how we used it. Now, obviously, I you could kind of use this to do some type of hunting with it, possibly. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you could create like a little tiny miniature spear, possibly if you get lucky using it for fishing. Not ideal in any way, shape, or form. There are way better tools for that but we decided to use it and check the sharpness of the edge, at the very least, and it was slicing pretty dang well. Next, we have some of the most useful tools that I found in the entire kit, which is the emergency whistle and the ferro rod. And the emergency whistle actually is pretty dang loud, like you guys are gonna see here. But then what was surprised me is considering the fact that this is like a $70 tool for absolutely everything, this ferro rod struck really good sparks. It's a very soft ferro rod, so it's gonna be able to shave off a lot of that metal really easily. And when we used it with a 90 degree spine on the knife, I mean, it lit a fire really, really freaking well. And that was important to me, knowing that you could get a fire started and signal for help outside of its main functions as a shovel and a hatchet. Now there's some additional extension arms and there's a butt cap piece right here. And this butt cap piece, this is kind of like the nuclear nugget of the whole system because there's the flashlight right here that has a turn head. It only has three modes, which is low, high, and strobe for signaling. And it's actually not too bad. You use the twist head to go through the modes. It is water resistant. It takes a single AA battery. It's not super dim. And this is low, this is high, and this is strobe right here. And it works pretty well. I've got to say it's not too bad. I haven't checked the run times or anything. It wasn't a flashlight review per se. This is kind of like a hammer point right here. So you can do some rock crushing if you need to when it's attached to the main body and it has more weight to it. But you basically can unscrew this entire system and it exposes the standardized bit set. And I'm sure if you found any tools more useful because these are standardized sizes, you could just swap them out with a different set. But inside the handle right here is actually the hexagon rinse spot right here where you actually connect them and actually start using now this is a plastic rubber over molded piece that actually does come off which is kind of ingenious but this system right here has this little collar that holds the wire saw deep inside which i thought was actually pretty clever but when you go through and actually check this out like this this whole piece unscrews and exposes the compass. Now, given the fact that this housing right here is aluminum, once you take it out of the metal housing, this actually does point north and actually does work really well. I was very happy to see that because when you start diving into 15, 20, 25, and 30 plus tools in a cheap, budget-friendly $70 package, you start worrying about the smaller components and wondering if they're actually going to work and point the right direction. Now, in a realistic sense, is this particular system, this 20-in-1 survival tool designed to replace things like your ferro rod, your whistle, your knife, your hatchet, your saw, your compass, your flashlight, and your shovel? No but it is a awesome substitute when you have a very high concern for space and weight. So all in all, these are the types of tools that that particular system can replace, like I said, when space and weight and being able to have portability are of the utmost concern. It's a compromise, maximizing space and efficiency for overall raw performance. This thing, if you're gonna give it any cons, it has more weight, takes up more space, and yes, does overall cost a lot more money to buy these tools individually. I understand 100%, like I said, 
there are people out there who would rather just buck up carry all the tools and have the right tools for the right job. There's no disrespect over there. But as far as innovation, R&D, and trying to create new exciting different tools that can do multiple things and not just one and create some possibilities for more versatility in the future, I'm always going to be open and give my skepticism room to play and explore and have fun testing different tools in the field of innovation. And some companies, like I believe this company, did a pretty good job in their overall execution of a 20 in one tool system. Very similarly, how I, I like the new redesign for the off grid tool survival axe elite. This is a 30 in one tool. I've done several videos on this and the new redesign, which is this one does an excellent job doing a lot of these tools fairly well, but just creating innovation for the sake of innovation. There are a few companies that just don't, don't get it. All right, Chris, I listened to your BS narcissistic jibber jabberish reviewing skidamarinky dinky for long enough. I want to know who you think this crap is for and why the hell we should even bother with it in the first place. Well, all I can tell you is I don't think that if you feel that something like this isn't in your wheelhouse or isn't for you, I'm not saying that you should go out and buy it. But who I do believe something like this are for are people like truck drivers preppers, people who want to do a lot of off-roading, backpackers, campers, anyone who's got space to keep a multi-function tool in a very mobile, portable, and convenient location. So if they find themselves without the proper tools, they've got something that can get some of those jobs done. But as always, with all the gear, we showcase this particular item and all the other individual tools, the survival axe lead, things like that. I'll definitely have all the links if you want to learn more down in the video description. The winner of yesterday's Amazon gift card giveaway is Kenny Howard. Congratulations, Kenny Howard, you are the winner. So definitely contact us on the back end of our channel so we can get your contact details. But that just about does it for now. And if you enjoyed the full test and review of this 20 in one survival shovel, dip this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that just about does it for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out. <laughs>